Hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math, coming to you live from my house. Um, today we're going to be talking about Chapter 7, the first, first lesson, uh, Ratios, Rates, Tables, and Graphs. Um, we've already learned a little bit about this, and we just need to go ahead and include the Tables and Graphs portion of it now. Um, this is Chapter 7. In Chapter 6, we learned about ratios and we learned about rates, so we're just kind of putting that together and, and using that to solve some problems. So what you should already know, um, and you learned from chapter 6, is what a ratio is, what a rate is, and what an equivalent ratio or an equivalent fraction, they're basically the same thing, what those are. So a ratio is a comparison between two numbers. Like if you said you had, um, I don't know, three cats, and you had six dogs. Okay, so you can write that as a ratio, and the ratio could be written as... 3 with a colon to 6, or you could write it 3 with the word 2, 6, or you could write it as a fraction. And the fraction is probably the most common. The fraction and the colon, really, is what you'll see the most. Okay? But just keep in mind that you can also simplify these, these ratios, and they'll be, they'll be equivalent. Most likely, you'll see a fraction that you will um, simplify. We can divide both of these by 3. So that would simplify to one half. Okay. Um, now that's a ratio. A rate is a comparison of two numbers. Basically, it's a ratio, but it's a special kind of ratio. You're comparing two things with different units. So in this case, maybe we travel 300 miles. Wait, no, that's not right. Let's back up here. Let me erase that. We travel. 300 miles in five hours okay so we can write that as a fraction as a ratio say 300 miles in five hours all right and then there's a special um, way we can write that as a unit rate and we can write that as a unit rate by getting a denominator of one and we can do that by dividing that bottom number by that same bottom number <clears throat> 5 divided by 5, in fact, gives me 1. 300 divided by 5 gives me 60. So that tells me that we traveled at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. Okay, so 60 miles in one hour. And the equivalent ratio fraction, well, that's basically what we've been talking about in these last two sections here. Okay, I talked about an equivalent ratio there. I talked about an equivalent ratio here. So all this stuff is equivalent ratio. When you take a ratio like one half and you say it's equal to, um, well, yeah, we can do two. Let's, let's do two. Let me back that up here. All right. And I can say two fourths is the same thing. Three sixths is the same thing. Four eighths is the same thing. All those are equivalent. Okay. So keep that in mind. Let me go back here for a second. And all I'm all I'm doing is taking this one half and I'm multiplying it by the same number. Alright. One half times two over two gives me two fourths. Alright. One half times whoops, let's not do that. Uh, back up just one step. Times three gives me three over six. See what I'm saying? So that's all I'm doing there. All right, so here's a problem, and we're gonna we're gonna take this problem, we're gonna put it into a rate, we're gonna come up with a unit rate, and then we're gonna we're gonna put it in a table and see how many other equivalent rates we can come up with, um, and then we're gonna graph it onto a, a coordinate plane. So here we have the Webster family, and they are taking a trip, okay, uh, an express train to Washington D.C. The train travels at a constant speed and makes a trip in two hours. And you can see by the little map here that the distance is 120 miles. Okay, so knowing that, we can solve our problems. We can come up with a rate, first of all, in, in the form of a ratio of 120 miles in two hours. All right, and we want to find out what the unit rate is. So the unit rate, well, I want to get one in the denominator. So I divide that denominator of our rate by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. So 120 divided by 2 will be my unit rate. 120 divided by 2 is 
60 miles, or, well, it's just 60, 60 miles an hour. So that tells me that this train travels at a speed of 60 miles in one hour. All right. Okay, so now that we have our unit rate, we can go ahead and, and fill out a table. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make this my, um, my distance, and I'm going to make this my time. Okay, so 60 miles in one hour. So in order, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with equivalent ratios. So I'm going to multiply, and I'm always going to come back to this one to come up with my equivalent ratio. All right. So say, so 1 times 2 is 2. 60 times 2 is 120. We had that to begin with. 1 times 3 is 3. 60 times 3 is 180. 1 times 4 is 4. And then 60 times 4 is 240 and then I'm going to throw a little loop in here and say 4.5 because that could be one as well all right they don't always have to be whole numbers they can be decimals all right so 1 times 4.5 gives me my 4.5 60 times 4.5 gives me 270 so that's my table all filled out that's all I have to do all right so now that I have my values I want to go ahead and come up with ordered pairs and this is my distance again this is my time these are my ordered pairs. These are my ordered pairs. All right. These are my ordered pairs. And if you don't know what an ordered pair is, um, it's two numbers that help you plot a point on a coordinate plane or a grid, kind of like what I have down here. Okay. I have my, my time across the bottom right here. This is my time. And then I have my distance going up this way. So I'm going to plot my time first and then I come, I'm not, I'm not going to plot it, but I'm going to, I'm going to say my time first and then I'm going to come up to wherever my distance is okay so what I mean by that is my time is first I hit the wrong button my time is first so I want to write these in a set of parentheses and I want to separate the numbers by a column I'm by a comma all right so my next ordered pair is 2 120 next ordered pair is 3 180 and then Four, two hundred seventy, and then finally four point five, and no wait, two hundred forty. Excuse me. Then this is two hundred seventy. All right. So those are my ordered pairs, and I'm going to actually change my color, and I'm going to plot those things. Let me get a bigger. Let's see what that's going to do. All right. So my first one is one sixty. So whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Not yet, anyway. Um. All right, so I want to come over to 1, which is right here, and then go up to 60. So there's 50, and there's 100. There's no 60 on my list. So I got to kind of, kind, of, kind of guess. All right, it's going to probably be right about there. All right, 75 should be there, so it's, it's below halfway. All right, so let's go ahead and plot it. I think I need a bigger. All right, so let's just say it's right there. Okay. That's a little big for a point, but you get the idea. All right, so the next ordered pair is 2, 120. So I come over here to 2, and once again, I got 100 and I got 150. But there's no 120 on here, so it's somewhere between 100 and 150. Um, 125 will be about halfway, so it's going to be below halfway again. So we're going to say that it's going to fall about right there. Okay? All right, next one. 3 180 so here's 3 and then 180 is going to fall between 150 and 200 175 is about halfway so it's a little past halfway that's going to put it yeah, i'd say about right there i hit the wrong button again let's try going i was wondering why that was so light there we go all right now, let's go to the next one, order pair 4, 240. So there's 4, there's 200 and 250. So it's close to 250, but it's not quite all the way there. All right, so let's say 4 and 240 be about right there. Okay, and then finally, 4.5270. Where is 4.5 on this list? Well, 4.5 is halfway between 4 and 5. Okay, we learned this on a number line. We know this. So 4.5 is right there. And then I come up to 270. Well, there's 250. There's 300. So it's somewhere between there. 275 should be 
about halfway, so it's just under halfway. So 4.5 and 275 should fall about right there. Then you can connect your dots. All right, I'm going to change to my last color here, and I'm actually going to draw a line. Hopefully this will work out to be a straight line. Let's see if I can do that. All right, let's close that. Start at zero because our time starts at zero. And then we draw our line. And my points are a little off, but not too bad. But that's it. That's all you have to do.